What's up guys? So I just wanted to address kind of the whole thing that's going on right now with being in quarantine because of the coronavirus. Um, I've got a ton of great content that I wanna put out, but I felt like it was weird without some sort of just kind of disclaimer and update on what I'm going through. So today's March 22nd. Last week I started working from home. So as you may or may not know, I work on the Hurley.com website doing kind of digital marketing and running the e-commerce site. And so I started working from home for that. As far as my wedding photography goes, I finished my last wedding on March 14th, kind of right before everyone started getting quarantined. Then my next weddings aren't until May 5th and May 30th. They still have yet to be postponed, but I imagine they probably both will be. And then I don't have any book during the summer. My fall is really stacked. So I'm hoping that this all clears up and I can get back to work in the fall regarding my wedding work. It's really crazy times around here. Everyone's still going outside, still super friendly, but everyone's very cautious. All the grocery stores and stuff are completely ransacked. Uh, no frozen food, no toilet paper as you guys probably have seen on the news, it's pretty crazy, but yeah, uh, we're just kind of stuck inside, just hanging as a family and enjoying this time together, but also just trying to figure out how long this will last and just trying to make the most of it. As of right now, I'm hoping that it's only a couple more weeks and we can get this thing under control, but there's projections that it could be a couple months. So if it's a couple months our economy is gonna just completely crash so i'm really worried about that just from my day job and just you know our money invested and stuff it's it's not a good sign so we'll see how that all goes some things that i've really been enjoying are the f stoppers if you guys follow them on youtube um, those two guys i don't know their names but they're in puerto rico right now and they're doing daily vlogs from puerto rico not even vlogs just sitting down and speaking for an hour about all the news they're reading and just kind of current things that are happening. It's been really interesting watching that because they're just kind of normal people like you and I that are just photographers and are just kind of experiencing it and sharing their experiences as this all goes down. So I definitely recommend checking out that. Another thing that I've just been enjoying, I listen to the daily podcast by the New York Times. I really enjoyed that, but a lot of times it's political, which I'm not super into politics. So I, Still listen to them because it's good to be informed, but I don't know, it's just so divisive. And then people like Cody Warner and Maddie Hapoya, um, two YouTube people that I follow, they are doing vlogs and kind of getting into daily vlogs again just because they're quarantined and they're creators. And so it's awesome to see them and just they're really great at storytelling and sharing their experiences. So I think most of all, I'm just really in enjoying seeing how people are dealing with this and their thoughts and their feelings behind everything. That to me is super interesting, more interesting than the media and kind of the doom and gloom that, or whatever message that they're pushing. I try not to watch the news that much. And so for me, it's just more beneficial for me to see how other people are experiencing things and handling it rather than just listening to whatever the media is pushing. So yeah, if you wanna check out those, I'll link those below. Sorry, that was a crazy long intro to probably an already long video, but hope you enjoy this. I wanted to make this video and I have more videos that I wanna make and really I just wanna continue entertaining you and giving you resources and entertainment for when we do get back into shooting and you can be ready to pick up your camera and just get out there, so thanks. <laughs> Ryan Little said, I feel like I learned a lot watching that video. I'm curious about specifically the things you look for when you're scoping out the venue for bridal portraits. That's such a great question. I think a lot of times I just assume people know what I'm talking about, but I thought this would be a great video where I can just show you guys how I scope out a venue. So I'm gonna go to a nearby venue and show you what I do.
first step when I start looking for places, I consider a few things before I even start looking around. I'm thinking about the timeline, I'm thinking about accessibility, and I'm thinking about privacy. And those each have different things that go about them. So with timeline, I'm working with the coordinator ahead of time to make sure that I have enough time when the sun is best for that location. So sometimes you lose the sun early behind the mountains, sometimes buildings like this place blocks the sun a little bit earlier. So you have to take those factors into consideration. For accessibility, you have to realize that the bride and groom or whoever the couple are, are in clothes that slow them down. Maybe they're in uncomfortable shoes, they're in heels, they're in a long dress. Things make them so they're not as fast and easy to maneuver around, and so you need to take that in, into consideration. And then last, privacy. I need to not be near the cocktail hour because I'm gonna lose a couple to all their guests if I just am shooting right next to cocktail hour. And so I want privacy for them away from their guests, but also just if I'm shooting in locations that there's a lot of people, I want them to this time to feel romantic and personal and so they're not feeling awkward because I want them to feel as comfortable as possible and I want this to be a little bit of alone time during their portrait session that they're not getting through the rest of the wedding day. And I think that makes for the best photos and also just makes it super personal and memorable for them. The most important thing that I'm looking for when I'm scouting out a place is good light. So I'm gonna lose the light because of this building at about five o'clock and the sun doesn't set till seven. So that makes it about two hours before golden hour or an hour before golden hour. And so I'm not gonna get the best light while I'm stuck inside here. So that makes me realize like I need to look for alternative options. One, the shade will make nice for good textures and backgrounds and just easy light to deal with. But if I want the best light, I'm gonna have to go somewhere else. Along with good light, I'm looking for some just compositional things that I can use to my advantage. So one that I really love is just framing. So whether that's archways of doors, archways of windows, anything that I can frame my subject with to make the everything outside of my subject less distracting and really draw your eye into the couple or the portrait. Other things I'm looking for are like leading lines, symmetry, reflections, just any sort of compositional elements that will help make the photos more interesting. So ideally you have good light and those things, but sometimes you only get one. So here we're gonna lose the light two hours before because the building blocks the sun. And so I know a couple minutes down the street, there's a beautiful district and there's just a lot of cool textures and there's good shade if it's too bright but there's also beautiful light. So it gets golden hour really nicely and it's five minutes down the street. So I'll work with the coordinator on the timeline to make sure that I have enough time to travel there and back and have enough time to shoot there for at least 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. And I'll show you a little bit about what that looks like. So you're gonna to wanna to get Sunseeker app. That's the app that I use just to see where the sun's gonna be at what time. It makes it super easy and really nice just to predict where the sun's gonna be. And you can use this to your advantage for bridal portraits, but also for family portraits and the ceremony and everything. I use it just to know where the light's gonna be during different times of the day. So with this place, I know that there's other locations that I can use and so I just schedule in a little bit more time for the portrait session so that I can leave this venue and go and get some different photos. Let's go, let's go check that out. So that literally took a minute and a half to get here. Obviously it's gonna take a little bit longer with the couple loading in your car or whatever, but just make sure you have your car clear, ready to be jumped into, everything's good, and the coordinator knows that you're leaving and they have your number just in case something changes with the timeline. But yeah, two minutes away, there's this whole new space that we can shoot in and just give us a lot different photos that will just add to the gallery and just make it a lot better. Again, I'm looking for the same things, cool textures for backgrounds, leading lines, symmetry, any of those kind of compositional elements that will just help make the photos look a lot better. But then because we're not obstructed by the building, we have really good golden hour at this time during couples portraits in this spot. So yeah, I'll show you a little bit of this area.
that's pretty much it. That's how I scope out venues. And in this case, the venue isn't perfect for the best light. And so five minutes down the street, actually a minute and a half down the street, there's this option here that we just looked at. So you just have to think outside the box a little bit, see what is at your disposal, what is within a couple mile radius that you could go to if you need to leave the venue for portraits. The nice thing about leaving too is that you're not gonna run into any guests. And so you're gonna have alone time with a couple to really get good portraits. So. Number one is look for good light. Number two is think about composition, framing, reflections, symmetry, rule of thirds, all of that good stuff. And then last but not least is really just making sure your, your couple is comfortable. Letting them just have this time and just be relaxed and enjoy it because one, this is their day and this is the only time they get really alone. And then number two, it's gonna make for a lot better portraits when they're comfortable. So I hope this helps. If you like this video, please like this. I know a lot of my stuff's about film, but primarily I'm shooting weddings. So this is my bread and butter of what I spend most of my time doing and how I make my money and so uh, yeah, I would love to do more videos like this in the future. Just let me know what else you'd like me to touch on. And yeah, thanks for watching.